Okay, so um, I want to talk about some useful things in uh, about some useful theorems in category theory that I'm not going to prove, but we're going to use all the time. Okay, so the first uh, useful thing has to do with adjoints. Okay, so um, adjoints. Okay, so what are these two things? Okay, so, so it says that there's two quick theorems. So th theorem one, right? So, uh, so right adjoints preserve limits. Limits. And left adjoints preserve colimits. Okay, so um, let me give you a, an example application. So here, this is a, these are the, the two theorems that I want to talk about. The other two theorems that I want to talk about are um, representable functors preserving limits. And, um, uh, that, and, and when a category has all limits. So it turns out the category of topological spaces has all limits. And there's two things that you need to check. Okay? And, and, um, and that's like kind of a convenient way to check when a category has all limits and co-limits. Okay, so let's, let's talk about this example that we've, I, I've, I've kind of stated before. Um, so example. Okay? Um, it, so there's, there's, okay, so... Let's look at the category of topological spaces. And then there's a forgetful functor to sets. Okay? And then there's two adjoints. There's this, uh, there's two, excuse me, a spoiler. Uh, so there's the discrete topology that you can put on a set. Okay? And um, so, so you, here, you just make the topology so that all sets are open. Every single one of them is declared to be an open set. Okay, so it's like I take a random set, and now I need to make it a topological space, so I need to put the open sets on it, and that's the set that I just put all of them in there. And then there's the indiscrete topology, right? Indiscrete. Okay, and then here, so this, this has, this declares all sets to be open. Okay, and then this one here, it makes the opens are uh, the empty set and the, and the whole set S, right? The, so, uh, so this is if the set is S, okay? So there's, the, the, okay, okay. And so what, what, does the, what do these things do, okay? So it says that if you have any function, right, from S to a topological space, it automatically is continuous because the inverse image of an open set is open because all inverse images are open. So, uh, so, so what are the freebies here? So th from, from these two things, we have uh, some uh, freebies, right? It says that any map, any function in the category of sets, uh, so any function, uh, let's say uh, S to X, as a set is automatically continuous. Continuous in discrete topology. Okay? The other thing is that any function from X to S So this is just a map of sets uh, as sets. So any function is uh, is automatically uh, continuous in the indiscrete topology. Okay. So one way of saying this is that um, so. So, okay, so how, how can we write this? So it says that 
Uh, so it says that in, now in the category of topological spaces, Okay, this is always continuous. Okay, and this is determined by, uh, so, so this thing is, so this is determined by S to forget. Okay, so this is just any, any function. Okay, so we could call this F. And this is f as well. This is the exact same thing, but now it's it's a it's a, it's a topological space. Okay. Um, similarly, right? We we have the same thing for the indiscrete topology, right? So for the indiscrete topology, um, so we have the other way around. So x. Uh, so let me move this up. So x to indiscrete. S is always continuous. And um, S, so the, and then the other way, so this is, so this is G, right? We have, uh, uh, similarly, we have uh, forget X, G, S, and this is a, any function. Okay, so continuous maps in the indiscrete topology are same as functions this way. In uh, continuous maps in the discrete topology are just functions this way. Okay? So this is the adjunction. Okay? So um, the way we write that is that uh, in terms of categories uh, is that this thing here, top, so topological maps of topological spaces in the discrete topology here. So this is the same thing as uh, maps from sets like this. All right? So this is, these are, so, so this, this says that here we have an adjoint pair. So this, this thing here, discrete is a functor, and forget is an adjoint pair. Okay. Um, uh, similarly, uh, we have the same thing, but with the indiscrete topology. So x indiscrete. Uh, forget. Okay. So this thing here says that. Uh, forget in discrete is an adjoint pair. Okay, so it says that forget is the left adjoint of the indiscrete functor, and forget is the right adjoint of the discrete functor. Similarly, you know, indiscrete is the right adjoint of forget, and discrete is the left adjoint of, of forget. Okay, so um, they're, they're adjoint pairs. Okay, and so, um, uh, so what, is, what is a consequence of this? So, so, so forgetful, so forget is both a left and right adjoint. It's both a left and right adjoint. Okay, so what does this say? It says that limits, okay, so, it's, so what you can do is you can take, uh, so if you take a limit in the category of topological spaces, forget, and you take a limit uh, or co-limit in the category of topological spaces, so the limit is because it's a, a right adjoint preserves limits, right? So in, uh, okay, so in, uh, uh, limit uh, it, it, let's see, limit of D in the category of topological spaces. Okay, so this is the same thing as the limit of, okay, now we can take the same diagram and we can do it here. 
in topological spaces. Okay, so so what and then the same thing goes for colimits, right? <coughs> because it's both a, 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 a same for oh, sorry, not forget for colimits. Okay, so uh, it's both a left and right adjoint, and and so it, okay that explains. Let's see if I have that row here. Okay, yeah. So that explains in this diagram here, right? So uh, here, we, you notice that the product here of topological spaces, right? It's the same thing as so the underlying uh, set of a topological space, right? Of, of a, a product of topological spaces, is the product of the underlying sets, right? And the underlying coproduct of topological spaces, uh, the, the underlying set of a coproduct is uh, the coproduct of the underlying sets. Okay, so the, the product, so yeah, so it's the product of the limits, or sorry, sorry, the limit, sorry, the underlying set of the limit is the limit of the underlying sets, right? So the, it, it, uh, the, the two processes commute, and it's just a matter of figuring out which topology to put on um, uh, your your the set that you've constructed, okay. So if, that's uh, that's a very nice feature of of the category of topological spaces. Um, okay. So I didn't really say what an adjunction was, right? Um, oh, let's see. I think I have another example though. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Here's another example. Okay. So so this is an example where you have left and right adjoints. Um, all right. Okay, so um, all right, so 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 let's look at pointed topological spaces. Okay, so in the category of pointed topological spaces, um, it it's, it doesn't work quite the same way. You'll notice that there is. Um, let me see if I can find that diagram here. Right in the in the category of pointed topological spaces, I just can't like forget things right here. Right, so. Um, uh, so there is a forgetful functor from here to here, right? But it can't uh, preserve co-limits, right? Because this just isn't a disjoint union here, okay? So that can't preserve co-limits. And so let's see, uh, left adjoints preserve co-limits. So that means that uh, if I have a, uh, th that means that the forgetful functor cannot be a left adjoint. Let me kind of like write that out, right? Okay, so um, an example. Another example. Okay, so in in uh, or, or we can do it to topological spaces even. Okay, so we could go to pointed topological spaces can go to topological spaces. Okay, this could be the forgetful functor. Well, we'll what we'll do is we'll forget a fun. So we have lots of things that we call the forgetful functor. So it's not that one exclusively. We call a lot. So but here we'll forget a point, right? So this is the forgetting a point functor. Okay, there's also another functor here. Right uh, here, we can go to top here, okay. And what we can do is we can take a topological space, and then we can just kind of throw in a point, right? So we'll, we'll artificially introduce an, a, a new point, right? And then we'll make this point the marked point, okay? So this is another functor, functor. Okay, and we can call this the artificial adjoint. We'll call that A, okay? Maybe. There's another name for that, but we'll call that A for now. Okay, and so the question is, um, uh, so, okay, so we want to know if this thing preserves co-limits, say, okay? So can, can this thing preserve co-limits? Or is, is forget, a left adjoint? In particular, is this thing a forget an adjoint pair? Right? Because could we have something like this where where you know you have this thing and, and um, you know you, you could you could wonder if if um, um, you know if it seems like a, it could be a thing, right? Um, no. Right, uh, so 
so let's see, see. So left adjoints. So sorry, sorry. Let's see. Is forget a left adjoint. Sorry, I wrote that wrong. So it should be forget a. Okay. So left adjoints. So no. The answer to this question. The answer is no. Right? Why? So left adjoints preserve colimits. And uh, here, if we take the, the, so if we do a wedge product here, so the co-limit, um, okay, so, so here, uh, x, x0, wedge, y, y0 here. Uh, so this thing looks like, well, uh, so it's x disjoint union y, and then we actually quotient, so, okay, let me give you the definition here. Right, and then we have this single point here. So these two points have been glued like this. Okay, that's what this, this thing is. Um, we'll talk about quotients more in a bit. But um, uh, so this is, this is what happens. And, um, uh, it, it, and so, uh, okay, but if we were to forget this, so if we, we, we go like this and we forget, and we just go to topological spaces, we expect it to just be a coproduct, right? So this just gives us right, the underlying set like this. And this thing here is not equal to, well, x disjoint union y. So this thing is, is two components, at least two components, right? You know. Well, it's two parts, but in this thing, they, they, these things, inter so the intersection of this and the intersection of this as a subspace of this whole thing is empty. But here, these two things intersect in a point, right? So again, like the, the, the idea of the wedge product is that like we kind of glue them together. And then on this side here, they're, they're like this, okay? So they're not glued, right? So um, yeah, so this, this, gives it, this, this, this can be used to show that something is not an adjoint as well. All right, so um, all right, so so the one thing that I do owe you is a description of what adjoints are officially. All right, so let me pause and then I'm going to do that. <laughs>